Hey there, lovely soul. This is Infinity, and thank you for joining me for this video on empaths. What is an empath? Am I an empath? So are you an empath? Well, let's get into it in a second. But before we do, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, like I said, my name is Infinity. I am a shaman, mystic, medical medium, psychic, physical empath, channeler, medium, meditation guide, channel guided astral meditation guide uh i am a distance quantum healer i work with people and animals all over the world uh from zoom and i've been doing that well before the pandemic I work with tarot and oracle cards, uh, which is something I really enjoy doing, but I can just make psychic connections and give psychic advice without cards as well. I offer a lot of services on my website, thehealingbutterfly.org. I'm also a divinely guided artist and I'm going to be uh, really focusing on my art a lot more in the future and I'll be bringing you more of that as well. So back to the empath part, you heard me say, I'm a psychic physical empath. And what that means is that I psychically pick up information about people and animals, uh, like telepathically, psychically, um, I'll just feel in my body exactly how others feel in their body. So regular empaths, there's like a scale of empaths and regular empaths, when I say regular, um, most empaths, I should say, most empaths are on, are on the scale of being telepathic, being psychic, being very sensitive to energy, feeling how people feel emotionally, but not so much physically. They'll feel depression, they'll feel anxiety, they'll fear, feel fear, they'll fear, feel um, sadness, excitement, um, bliss, joy, horniness even. They'll feel like those types of things, like they'll feel the emotions of that. Love even um, will be felt by regular, I say most empaths are in that spectrum. Now within that spectrum, it varies as far as how in tune someone is on that empath scale. But here's the thing with all empaths is that we are biologically created differently than people who are non-empaths. And you may be going, wait a minute, what? <laughs> so yeah, the reason why people are empaths is because their physicality is different, not their mentality or their emotional um, intelligence or anything like that. Although those things definitely pay, play a part in, with any empath, but it's their actual biology. And now let me explain. What this means is that a normal human non-empathic person has neurotransmitters throughout their body that say compared to the size of an apple. And empaths have neurotransmitters all over their body that compared to a size of a grapefruit or a small watermelon or a really, really big watermelon, like, like, state fair size watermelon that's the difference between kind of that scale and to be a psychic physical empath you're all the way over into the big watermelon state fair neurotransmitters um, which means that that your recept your receptors for energy and information goes well beyond your own body and even you know you understanding your you know what's going on with your body it means your energy is able to reach out like tentacles and pick up on information from other bodies of energy and feel that in your body exactly how that body feels it. So it goes beyond, it goes into the physical, which is the densest um, energy, whereas like emotions and uh, that sort of energy is lighter. It, it moves through the ether a lot freer and more easily than 
how then the energy of actual physical pain you may as a normal regular more typical empath be like you can you can feel the emotions and read the energy of somebody who doesn't feel well and maybe even they'll say you'll know who's not feeling you know you could see them you go oh yeah Susie isn't feeling well and she's like oh my stomach and you start to even maybe even feel a little tired and unsettled and stuff but are you gonna have a stomach ache exactly like Susie feel super nauseous and have stomach cramps and have it like you're exactly experiencing what Susie is? No, not unless you're all the way off on the scale of psychic physical empath, like I said, I am. So most of my life, I was picking up on the physical feelings as well as, now let me explain this, it's not just like, oh, you skip over the emotional understandings of people and feelings and and energy of people no you get all of that and the physical as well so not only would i telepathically physically like spiritually feel the energy of somebody who was um even though they were acting a certain way and most people they were fooling for me i would be like there's like i could feel the energy and that's how most empaths are and that's actually one of the questions we'll get into here but um for a physical empath you physically feel exactly what other people feel and it's not isolated. Say you're in a group of 20 people, you're picking up on the energy and the physicality and the mentality, um, the emotional uh, energy of all of these people. Not just like, oh, you're gonna <laughs> just pick like one of them. Or if you're in a, if you're in a stadium, that's all energy on energy on energy that you, that you can pick up on. Now, like I said, there's like the scale of that so for some physical empaths they may just feel the people that they're extra connected to and not just everybody or and not exactly how a person feels it so let me explain that when i say exactly i mean exactly so if you have a, a pain in your knee or a pain in your back, or a pain in your head, or a pain anywhere in your body, a, a, a sensation in your body, I will feel it exactly how you feel it. So again, going back to just, let's take it down to 10 people, me and 10 other people. And let's say five of those people have some type of ouchie going on in their body. You know, like maybe somebody's shoulders tense and somebody's knee hurts and another person um, has a bit of a headache and another person's joints are achy because whatever that's just how they feel and whatever so I'm gonna feel all of that at the same time but it's gonna you know come and go and do all these weird things because I'm not always around these 10 people so I'll leave this situation and not feel that way um and you know, i'll get into more of that and the the purpose and the reason why most empaths and 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 now let's take the mo i'll finish my sentence most empaths don't like a lot of people being around a lot of people because even the the norm empath that feels the emotions but not the physical and the emotional still that's a lot you know let's say that this one's depressed this one's happy this one's angry like you know they're all acting a certain way but underneath what's going on that's what we feel um, as empaths and the reason again for this is because we have larger neurotransmitters we can feel more now the caveat here is and this is little bear the caveat here is that how much of this stuff you can feel and tune into and understand on a more pinpointed and targeted basis whereas like you could be in a in a group of people and not necessarily pick up on every little thing you know in detail okay in detail with people but 
you would just feel emotionally tired. You would just kind of get this overall kind of just feeling heavy, that kind of thing, especially if you have a lot of energy built up in your body over time that tends to build up and weigh down. It just, there's only so much the body can transmute on autopilot without our direct intent to rejuvenate our bodies to clear energy because again as empaths we're conducting energy of our own we're um we're feeling everybody around us and we can if we're in the know about how to clear energy with crystals with um with uh by vibrational music with um energy healing and water therapy and and all sorts of different ways that we can clear energy even if you know to do all of that stuff it can it still can you know stick to the body where you have to you know really maintain but for most people, and especially most empaths, most people in general, they don't know how important it is to clear energy. That we don't go to that party with 10 other people, go and like walk out the door and it's all gone. It's sticky. There's people and energy are sticky. And especially if we're close to them. Let's say they're all my brothers and sisters and family and aunts and whatever. I have a really tight connect connected um, energy cord to these people. So as they feel what they feel, the closer I am to them, the, the thicker, the stronger, the more energy that's passing back and forth. Now a little sidebar here with cords. Uh, we connect through energy cords to everybody and everything all of the time but they're constantly in flux and some of them stick and stay more than others when we have familiar bonds good tight friendships um, people that we are around all the time that we know that we share space and energy with even if you're not you know personally close the people that you're like say you work in an office building this is like a, a bubble of energy that's all kind of connected Connected like a hive and people start to take you know really um, connect energy cords within that bubble so let's say you have a job someplace like 50 people and then you leave that job you'll still think about those people feel those people you'll still be very connected even if you didn't have a personal relationship with them and a lot of times people are like that is so weird like I'm like I wasn't even close to these people, but I'm still thinking about, it. I'm thinking about that job. I'm thinking about, or I'm feeling it, you know? And it's because you still have active cords connected to this place and these people. Now, this is a really big subject with empaths and you can see how I can branch out into going in a different direction. So I'll stop myself here because I'm gonna be doing a series on empaths because the way that we as empaths function in our day-to-day lives in our relationships and work and society in general our our health um our you know everything is governed by how much we feel energy around us and and how that impacts our physicality, our emotional situation, um, how we relate to others, how we sh- need to live, how we need to see our lives. And I'll just read through here um, the series that I'm working on. And I have a lot of titles so far. I'm, and I'm adding to it all the time as I'm guided because um, it's just really important to get through this. So i um, This is the empath quiz. I'm going to be doing another uh, video that's my specific story because even though it's kind of extreme, it still is very relatable for empaths. And then empaths uh, and love and relationships, empaths and sex, empath and energy cords, empaths and narcissists. That is a huge subject. You'll probably find thousands of videos on it if you search just those terms, empaths and narcissists. Um, But the one thing that... Um, 
that is majorly missing there is to understand how narcissists are empaths. And I'm going to get all into that in that video. And you may be like, what? But it's true. And I'll explain it in that video. Um, empaths and eating meat and your overall diet and cooking in general. Empaths and weight. Empaths and hair. Empaths and acne. Empaths and living spaces and crowds. Empaths and water, showers and baths. Empaths and the news and overall negative energy information empaths and limits empaths and work empaths and alcohol empaths and nature empaths and the weather empaths and water I already said that with baths and showers empaths and solitude empaths and creativity empaths and animals empaths and their light empaths and lies and so those are all separate videos that i'm going to be bringing to you in the next days and weeks to come if there's a specific subject for you that i'm missing here please comment in the video and um if it is a viable subject that just is very specific in how we're, life is for empaths i will certainly do it or answer your question um, but so far, this is a lot. I, ha I don't have this as not a numbered list, but it's a lot. It's a lot of, um, of titles, of videos, of information like empaths and weight, empaths and acne. Is it different for empaths? All of these things are different for empaths and empaths need to see differently for themselves and live life in a in a different from a different perspective than people who are not empaths. So you can be as empowered as possible. So you can be as happy, as healthy, living in wellness, not just surviving, but super duper thriving. You're human 2.0 empath. You have these abilities so you can help yourself understand life better and help others in whatever way you're destined to do that. I was I am a psychic physical empath and medical medium. I understand and feel into a person's body on such a level that most of my life I was chronically ill with fibromyalgia. I was finally diagnosed when I was 25. But it was when I was nearly 40 when I was finally divinely guided to understand about energy, about what it, an empath is. I had no idea what I was all of my life. I was just a mess, a wreck physically and emotionally because I had no idea why I felt the way that I did until that, <laughs> that code cracked for me in different um, layers and levels. And that's my empath story. Like I said, it's, it's a doozy. It's a doozy. Going from being chronically ill to finally, it's like being let out of a cage in the sun and seeing the world for the first time and seeing what, you're, what you are for yourself. And that's also a process. But... Because that happened, I could understand why I felt and why I was the way that I was because it really was quite bonkers and weird and intense and really, really serious. I mean, I couldn't work. I couldn't take care of my son. I was so, so sick, so sick. 50 to 60 pounds heavier than I am now completely messed up because of all the energy I was feeling and keeping and not shedding and not clearing and all of that stuff so my mission that I'm so passionate about not only is it to help um, because I am a, a, a healer a distance healer I work with people's energies I connect with your body I'll know exactly how it feels I'll get information from your soul from your body from the divine from your spirit guides and guardians and I can feel and understand what goes on there and working with you we help heal the body from really amazing detrimentally crippling painful things that don't need to be in the body but the body is locked into certain energies screaming out to be released but the body can only do so much on its own 
And so, oh, there's another title. <laughs> Empaths and getting sick. <laughs> I'm going to write that down before I forget. Um, because getting sick for us is a different situation like getting the cold getting the flu it's a different situation than it is for people who are non-empaths and again another topic because this one video if i get into all these different branches of this wild tree could be 20 hours long <laughs> so i'm gonna keep it at that um i hope that you stick here with me to do this quiz now this quiz is on my ebook on my it's called the essential empath guide and it's on my website thehealingbutterfly.org it is for free you can read it on my website or you can download it for download it and keep it it starts with 50 questions to help you understand now it's 50 questions it's a lot because it gets into more detailed stuff to really help a person understand where they are on that scale so you can go to my website download this ebook right now you can read along with me or go ahead and just re read it I'm just gonna get into the quiz here I'm not gonna read the book or get into anything there it's a long book it has a lot of information I really really implore you to read if you come up as an empath on this quiz please go get the book and like I said it's free so you know I'm not you know, asking even for a dollar for it. So, of course, I do accept donations. So, if you want to donate, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. But I'm not asking for any if anything. I want to help you understand what it is to be an empath, all the different ways that that is different for you, and what and we see everybody the same way. And at least we should, <laughs> you know, kind of see that um, kind of that blanket generalization of humans, a human. But the truth of the matter is, is that empaths aren't like non empaths. We're a different type of human because of our physicality and what that means for us. What we feel is how we we perceive and relate to the world. And all my life, it was very confusing for me how people interacted and how they interacted with me and things. And still, I'm kind of boggled by certain things, but I understand stuff because of the way that I feel. I don't, I don't live on the same planet that other people do, even though we're all here together. And the only, and the reason for that is, is that I feel things that most people don't feel. So how could we see the world and feel the world the same way if somebody's feeling to 10% and I'm feeling to 100% of what's out there? Um, that's a big difference. So anyhow, let's get into the quiz. Um, and I'm reading directly from my computer here the first question of the quiz and you feel free to stop this video here grab a piece of paper and a pencil it's super easy you get a point for yes no points for no if you relate to it if you're like yep that's me give yourself a point and we will add them up at the end okie dokie here we go number one i rely on my intuition a lot it's usually right on even when i don't want it to be uh, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. So you'll get a feeling about something. And even if you don't want that to be true, you'll be like, oh, this is going to happen or this isn't going to happen or this, they said this or that or blah, 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 whatever. And then it turns out that that's right. So yeah, <laughs> it's not like wish fulfillment or wanting things to be a certain way. It just is what it is. Next, I don't really like being in large public crowds. I need my space. And if I go into those spaces, I need time to recharge from it. So again, I kind of mentioned that before in the intro here. Um, you find that if you do get into large crowds, um, that or if you go to Walmart, if you go to a entertainment type thing, if you go to a Disneyland, if you go to a fair, if you go to a party, you know, there's different grades of this and what goes on in these places when you're in crowds. But if you find that when you go to a, a crowded place that like afterwards you're like really tired and you need a day or two and you just want to get away from people. And if you have something coming up, 
that is a crowded type situation and you're already feeling really drained and heavy, you're going to not want to do that. You'd be like anything but that. Just the thought of it makes you feel worse. And then if you change plans and decide not to do that, you'll automatically start feeling better because you're <laughs> you're disconnecting from already the energy that's coming. Because you can already feel the energy that's coming. Because as an empath, you're you're psychic to some degree. And we can reach into energies that are not in the physical. And already know what that energy is going to be like. So you can be kind of tired and have something coming up. And be like, think about it. And be like, oh no, that's going to be a lot of people there. But that's going to make me feel really good. Or you could be like, oh no, it's not even that many people, but the people are going to be there. What's going on? Forget it. So we can already kind of tell what the, that is. And then again, you'll need time to recharge from it. Okay, number three, I have a chronic illness like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue and the like. Yeah, so I, for me, it was fibromyalgia. I was chronically fatigued too but I had all the pain stuff as well because I am a physical empath and felt all that pain stuff um so yeah a lot of empaths especially physical em empaths to that grade will have the fibromyalgia and those types of, but especially fibromyalgia is very specific for empaths because there isn't and the whole problem with fibromyalgia is energy. And that's why I, I used to have fibromyalgia, but I don't anymore because I've rectified and fixed the energetic problem that was causing me to feel the way that I felt. So I could dupl I duplicate that and I can duplicate that with other people um, because of the nature of what it is. It's an energetic illness. So is chronic fatigue. That's energy. If you're, if you're tired, you don't have energy. It's pretty simple there um, but just most people don't know how to fix that or what that's from number four I know how people feel without them telling me people can't hide their true feelings from me I know instantly if something is wrong or off so yeah you'll just be like you know some people like or you'll they'll may trick you you know the first couple minutes but the longer you're around them let's say somebody come, you know your wife your husband your boyfriend comes home and you go to their house or whatever and they're like hey how's it going you know and acting trying to act normal and you're like what's up you will just know you'll feel the energy you'll start reading their mind you'll start feeling the energy um they just can't it's just very hard to lie to you it's very hard to get things past you you'll just know something is wrong or off okay number five i get really upset when i see violence or injustice i feel the pull to help and i have so you're somebody who has a really hard time seeing other people being um, persecuted, um, attacked, judged. You're the one that, you know, uh, goes and helps the person being bullied. You have to help if, you know, if you hear something going on, you're going to go and want to be of assistance. Number six, I usually know when people are being untruthful, holding back, or denying things. Now, that's a little different than, you know, the first one. This is just being around people, you'll know what they're feeling, and then there's people actually telling you one thing and you knowing it's a lie. Or even knowing that they're denying things for themselves. Like if they're in denial for themselves and you know the underlying truth because you feel the truth vibration, you'll know that too. So I call myself a uh, a human lie detector because it's very impossible to lie to me. Although people keep trying. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I usually know when people are being untruthful, holding back or denying things. Number seven, I love animals and they love me too. I seem to understand their needs more than the average person. You're just really in tune to the animal kingdom. You don't hurt insects. You know, you're that type of person. The animals meet you once and they love you. They, It's like they're super excited. You go to a person's house that has animals. They all want to be around you. You'll hear how, oh, this dog or this cat or this bird or this whatever doesn't normally 
you know, like people or go to people or, or they're shy, but with you, it's very different. It's because they can pick up on your energy being light and being more intuitive and you can telepathically communicate with them. This is how animal communicators, this is how I communicate with animals. We send vibrations, pictures, thoughts, ideas, all sorts of stuff telepathically. It's how animals communicate with each other. It's how we communicate with animals. And for those of us with larger neurotransmitters, we have the better capacity to be psychic, to be telepathic, to be in tune with those who cannot speak like babies and animals and therefore they gravitate to us. So also little babies will gravitate to us. Little ones that don't have such a big vocabulary and big life experience will zone in on you because you have that energy. Okay, next. I'm the person everyone goes to when they need to unload and vent you're the person you're the counselor you're it's like you know you it's like all and then you realize it's kind of side note that some people only call you when there's they have a drama a problem some chaos and something going on with their boyfriend or their mother or their boss or whatever and you know you're the one who they're going to call or text or want to come see because you help them you're that person because you have the capability with your larger neurotransmitters and your empathic body to feel into the situation on a different level than most people and so others will gravitate to you so regardless if you're a professional psychic medium channel like yours truly who you know does this for a living um i didn't always but now i do um i was in my whole previous life somebody from the time i was five years old getting messages for people and people actually adults coming to me asking me for advice when i was five six seven just a child because I had the answers so there you go um, and also that venting when they need to unload and vent so not just advice but to unload and vent because we are able as empaths to soak in more negative energy to help people unload that's also why we're here is natural healers where every empath is a natural healer in some way shape or form so when you're the person people go to to talk to because they don't feel good or they're upset they need to unload they need to vent and then after they're done they're like I feel so so much better and they just feel great you always make me feel good I feel so much better because it's what you say how you listen how you don't judge how you how you just take on their energy the detrimental thing to you is if you don't clear that energy and a lot of empaths have no idea how to do that or that they're even empaths and that's a thing that's happening okay but that's why we're here <laughs> Um, here we go. Next, I have learned that having and working with crystals really helps, especially the ones for protection and clearing. So, um, this just is kind of more like, just depends on this has been part of your journey or not. It wasn't mine until I was like 45 years old. So um, some people will have, I mean, I was always, I was collecting rocks and crystals when I was two years old is you know it's like you know I had bags and but I never understood what they did I just didn't get into that understanding on a metaphysical and spiritual and energetic level until way more recently and now I'm like I cannot get enough <laughs> my I'm so addicted to more and more crystals because of just their energy and what I know all about them but I'll, that's a whole other subject but this is um, that you've learned that crystals really help they really help you um, ground you uh, clear you protect you um, stabilize you uh, energize you heal you they do all these things okay next number 10 I love to rescue people who are in need it genuinely makes me feel good to help you really love helping people you really love giving to people you love um, being charitable you love pe uh, helping people in need you love lifting them up it's it makes you feel really really good number 11 I need to spend time alone to recharge after being around people so that's just a 
very simple. If you've been around a few people, you can't just like, I, I, a good indication indicator of that is like, you go out for an evening, you go to have dinner with some, even one person, you go to a restaurant, you go to hang out, or they come over to your house or whatever. It could be one or more people that the way that it's always been for me is like, I can't just get home and be like, oh, I'm tired, yawn, go to bed. Like I've needed at least two hours typically, if not more. Once I get, so if I'm not getting home at like one or two in the morning, I'm still, I'm up until three or four because I literally, I'm just like buzzing from all the energy and feeling all of that still very connected to whatever it may, it may have been. So that's one indication, but it's just, you know, like, like you're not going to back to back to back with a bunch of stuff and people and social gatherings or whatever, because you just need time. Number 11, uh, sorry, number 12, uh, I seem to get drained around certain people way more than others. So you'll recognize how being around um, your mom is feels one way, being around um, somebody at work or your best friend or your child or whomever feels a very different way that it's just it's very it's it's draining to be around some more pe some people more than others and the reason for that is because they have lower vibrational energies within them and attached to them and around them and that pulls on your energy so empaths i'm sorry narcissists would definitely fit into that category and again i'm going to get into that in a different video um but but yeah, that's definitely uh, an indicator. Okay, number 13. If I'm tired or in pain and I go out into nature, I feel so much better and I have to do it often. So nature is definitely a thing for you when it comes to um, how your self-care and, and what you need to feel good. Most empaths need to connect with nature every day go for a daily walk um and or sit outside or do something in nature or go into nature for long periods of time hiking and i'm um, going to into the ocean and just doing stuff that's very very involved in nature okay next number 14 if i get restless feel overloaded energetically or i am worn out or in pain going out into nature oh i've just didn't i just I'm confused. Oh, I have two of these in here? <laughs> oh. I just noticed a mistake here in my in my ebook. Okay, so this just adds to that. If I get restless, feel overloaded energetically, or I'm worn out or in pain, going out into nature always makes me feel better. Okay, um, number fifteen. I've been accused of being too sensitive. So yes or no to that. Pretty self-explanatory. Number sixteen. I've been accused of overthinking. Number 17, I've been accused of being too honest. Number 18, I am very sensitive to noises. Certain frequencies can make me very uneasy or upset. So repetitive noises, certain frequencies, all that kind of thing. Like I know for me, it's definitely a yes because why? I feel vibrations, I feel energy. So noises, repetitive noises, high-pitched noises, intent, like chainsaws and um, all sorts of stuff, beeping and stuff that a lot of people are just, um, stuff that shakes the ground that's like really intense vibrationally. A lot of people can just not even hear it, pay attention to it, that, that sort of thing. Um, dog barking could be, it's definitely part of that. That's a, that's a frequency, a noise, a generating energy at you that you pick up on and it's very uncomfortable and you'll want it to stop. You want it to get away from it. You, you know, that sort of thing. Okay. Number 19, I'm really interested in spirituality, metaphysics, crystals, herbs, oils, holistic healing, energy healing, and meditation. So pretty simple there. Number 20, I have trouble sleeping even when exhausted. My body has a hard time settling and or I can't shut my brain off. 
or your body's tingling i should add that to it um but yeah so so a lot of empaths even though they'll be really tired they'll have a really hard time sleeping because their body is just buzzing their head is just going off they're thinking all of these jumble of things like records playing over and over and just flipping channels all in your head that sort of thing so a lot of empaths suffer from insomnia because they won't even try a lot of insomniacs don't even get into bed close shut everything down close your eyes and they don't even get that far they'll say they have insomnia but they're not even trying to go to sleep because once they do they've learned conditionally that it's very uncomfortable because their body because they feel their body they feel their thoughts they can't distract themselves from what's going on in their physicality and their mentality that um they won't even try to sleep so there you go number 21 my hands hurt like arthritis but all tests are negative so hands are are you touch everything with your hands energy sticks like we so this has a certain energy to it this has a certain energy to it um and this has a different energy to it and everything you touch you're connecting your energy to that and that is connecting its energy to you we talked about energy cords so um as we work through our day our you know so days weeks months years you know hours minutes everything that we're doing every day and how we're touching things if we're lucky enough to have two arms and two hands we are exchanging energy with things and so um when i was really sick with my fibromyalgia my hands were like the worst pain almost chronically the worst pain because uh, my joints hurt so bad my hands just ached and it was because of all the negative energy that was just accumulated in my physical body in my hands and my joints that it made it very very painful so I was always on this really intense like arthritis medita medication even though I didn't have technically I didn't have arthritis I had exactly what felt like arthritis and I've known other people with fibro who even have like the messed up looking joints like arthritis but they don't actually have arthritis um and it's because of energy and I've worked with with I had one person actually that was really severe and she didn't have arthritis but you would bet your life that she did if you just took a look at her hands but she didn't all tests negative and I worked with her and actually her hands were very normal afterwards but yeah energy so but that's a hot spot for sure okay number 22 I've been a magnet for narcissists so like I said before many most if, if not all empaths have a history with narcissists and I'm going to have a whole separate video on that number 23 I'm the oddball of my family so are you the different one are you the one that's that you know just is that <laughs> sometimes there's two empaths sometimes it's a it's a parent and one child um more so now as we're moving into the future for sure but people of the ages like 40 up you may be that only person um or you you know you you and your brother sisters mother father you know that sort of thing you might be that that the oddball of the family if you're an empath there may be more of you but um, if you're an empath, you're the, you're an oddball. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Number 24, even though I can let it go for a little while, I don't like a dirty or cluttered space. It makes me uncomfortable and I want to clean. Uh, so a lot of empaths are pretty, um, they can even be OCD about their space because even if they don't understand why, they feel energy and cluttered a cluttered space a dirty space 
is negative energy trapped in that space. So a lot of empaths are pretty minimalistic in their space. You'll find that they're very clean. Um, a lot of empaths won't let you wear shoes in the house. They um, have a very strict policy for how things are and where they go in their homes and stuff like this. And they have a very strict cleaning schedule. Not just Now this isn't 100% of empaths. There's a lot of unhealthy empaths empaths that just get into a cycle of having messiness around them because as they get into it and clean they feel overwhelmed with all the energy and they just would rather leave it than fix it um so there is that so there's both sides of that when it comes to empaths so um don't be confused at like saying that emp that there aren't hoarder empaths there definitely are um, it's just they're stuck in in to a tsunami of energy and when they go to move it it's overwhelming and they can't and they've they they've had an attachment to things because of the energy that they feel even if it doesn't make sense okay moving on um I really number 25 I really don't eat uh, a lot or splurge that much but I'm still overweight and and it's very difficult to lose weight so that was definitely um not always my story because there was definitely a time when I was over 200 pounds when I did gradually just eat and eat and eat so but um for after I lost weight and for the most of my life and how it works for most people most empaths is even if they have a really simple healthy diet um, and they don't splurge that much they don't overeat they don't eat like crazy they'll still have 10 15 20 extra pounds maybe even more depending on who they're around what their work is like how stressful their life lives are um if there's narcissists in their lives things like this um because of the fact that uh that it's kind of like whales whales and blubber the blubber keeps them safe from the cold air. I was sorry, the cold water. Whereas with empaths, we have extra weight as blubber to help shield us from the energy that we so easily tap into. So like I said, aside from the fact that there was definitely a period where I was just eating everything in sight um, in my late teens, uh, for the most part, I people would say, do you see her eating a lot? Does she eat all the time? Does she constantly eating? You know, people would have said no. Um, she rarely finishes her plate. She has maybe one big meal a day. Yet, I was an average of about 150, 155 my, most of my adult life. Um, and now I'm not even, I think I'm like 115. Um, I don't, I don't really know, honestly, but somewhere in there, I went from a size 15 or 12 to a size two, um, because I, per, all that energy that, that was in, within me, I got rid of, and I was able to work with my own body, my own energy now, where I don't feel because I'm a psychic physical empath I don't feel everybody so easily the way that I used to like I explained to you when you go into a crowd and you feel all of these people it's so far pushed out because I have learned how to work with my bubble of energy and how to keep everything out not to say that there aren't little fissures that things come into and I will feel people even if they're not around me even if they're, I'm just energetically connected to them um it will because i that's what i am i meant to be connected to people but it's like it's the difference between having your doors and your windows wide open all of the time and everybody can see you and hear you and feel you and vice versa a hundred percent of the time or being closed up and just opening up when somebody comes over you want to go out that's how i am today so that's why i don't i'm not overweight by any stretch of the imagination because I don't need that okay so yes if you um, have extra weight and you can't lose weight um, 
empath. Number 26, my upper back and shoulder area right at my shoulder blades are often tense or tight and painful and a painful area in my body. Sometimes going up the neck area too. So that would be right at your shoulder blades. That's your rhomboids that goes up and it can, when those get really tight and inflamed, it can go all the way up into your neck. I used to suffer from this big time before I knew what that was and that's your um, heart chakra energy locked up and not able to move through your energetic wings so essentially we're supposed to open up these channels in our backs so we can um, move through and cycle through that energy and also you can have like too much normal energy stored up so it can it just that's where it's at. I speak to a lot of empaths who have this problem. And once we work out the deal there, they don't suffer from that anymore. But that's definitely um, a thing for empaths. Okay, number 27. I'll know to call a loved one because something went wrong or they are upset. You'll just all of a sudden get a feeling like boop. And you'll think about them. You're like, are they okay? I need to check if they're okay. I'm not sure they're okay. Like that kind of thing. And you'll call them or you'll text them because you just know something isn't right. Number 28, I'm a pretty creative, artistic person. I'll get surges of creativity or inspiration to write, draw, paint, create. And I always feel better after. So that's pretty um, self-explanatory there. So are you a creative person? Are you artistic? Do you get surges of creativity? Does it really center you, make you feel really good to kind of zone in on that type of energy. Uh, that's definitely a thing for empaths. Okay. Um, number 29, I'll suddenly be drawn to a video website or movie and it will be exactly what I needed. Does that happen to you? Um, or a song comes on and it's exactly what you're feeling or whatever. It's just up pops up, you know, down a short little rabbit hole, exactly what you need. Um, so yes to that if you have experienced that. And number 30, I'm sensitive to bright lights and even o overcast days. Um so you're sensitive to bright light, you're sensitive to sunlight, but even sometimes more so on overcast days if you go outside, because um, that sun really amplifies through the clouds. It's like being under one big fluorescent light. So a lot of empaths, very sensitive to light. Okay, number 31, I'm, defi I'm definitely a truth seeker. I love to discover things about the world and how things really work. Are you a curious person? Are you looking for the truth? Okay, number 32, I consider myself spiritual and connected to a higher source and I have, and sorry, <laughs> to a higher source and that I have guides. So do you feel like you're, you're connected to a higher source? Do you feel like you're a spiritual? Are you a spiritual person? Do you have certain knowings and understandings about yourself, your soul, that sort of thing? And do you communicate? Are you connected with spirit guides, angels, that sort of thing? Okay, number 33. I've had metaphysical and or spiritual experiences all of my life. So I could definitely say yes to that from getting messages when I was five years old from people's angels and guides and, and spirit guides and all of that to seeing apparitions to levitating um, to doing astral projection and all sorts of telekinesis type stuff when I was younger. So yeah, I've had just a multitude of those experiences and most empaths have. Okay, or I should say all, all empaths have. <laughs> Number 34, I get ringing in my ears. Usually it doesn't last too long though. So do you get any type of high pitched ringing in your ears? Is it, um, it'll just, it'll, typically it's in the left ear, but it doesn't have to be. And it's just as high pitch like frequency that just you know you'll just hear it and it'll go on and on and on and on for maybe 30 seconds 90 seconds a couple minutes but it shouldn't last too long though number 35 my body feels heavy a lot of the time like it takes more energy to move around than it should so that's pretty self either you do feel that or you don't 
36, my balance is not what it should be. You know that you'll, you can, you turn around too fast, you'll get off balance, you're just, it's off. Balance is not right. Um, number 37, I'll have days when I drop things constantly. Do you have those days? Um, pretty much all I'm past you and it's because of energy. Um, it's because we're it's kind of hard to explain actually it's because we are um we f we're feeling the physical i guess it's not that hard to explain unless it's heavy if it's just something light we're usually dropping lighter things um and it's because we're feeling the energy of the object um and we don't put a good grip on it to be honest it's just it's like the hands extended but it's not and so it's easily things fall out of your hands like as you even like you think you have it but it's falling because you didn't actually have it you're feeling it like you do you're feeling the energy not the actual material thing of what it is Okay, um, 38, I tend to get tightness and a burning or a pain in my chest, but it's not heartburn or anything else like that. It can come on suddenly and j leave just as fast or last for days. So tightness, burning in the chest, again, it's not heartburn. It's just a, it's a heaviness or tightness, burning in the chest, heat, um, could even feel it in the, in the upper, like, or the upper back but you'll feel it definitely in here and that is whoopsie um that is again your heart chakra so most empaths um we kind of go back to empaths really being heart-centered wanting to help be charitable people are in trouble you want to help them you're not somebody who's like laughing at people getting hurt and you're not the bully ever and you know there's very there's a huge difference there we have a, a larger capacity for love our heart chakra is about love and unconditional love and sometimes our heart chakra really expands and um if we're not in tune with what's going on there it can be really painful it can feel like there's something inside that's like pushing on the inside and it hurts that's the energy of your heart chakra and once you're once you understand how to work with your energy and your chakras then you can you won't feel that anymore i mean it, it happened to me so severely once before i was like awoken to all of this stuff that i took myself to the hospital because i thought something was severely wrong with me of course they didn't find anything and it was probably three years before i dotted all the connectors to and or <laughs> lined up all the all the connectors to understand this but yeah that's what that is okay number 39 finding deep purpose in my life is really important to me finding deep purpose in my life is really important to me you're you'll do a menial whatever general job because if you have to and you probably have empaths have sh switched jobs so many times more than they can think of or count um because of energy and people and being pulled in different directions to get our um life education we need to move around we need to be in different environments a lot of empaths can be accused of being even kind of flighty or not responsible or they can't hold down a job for you know really long time and it's that's just kind of the way of the empath um but so we can do that but underlying everything what fuels us is just like this need to have like what am i like this purpose like to be purposeful like what is my purpose to find that it's a very very big deal for empaths and light workers because they need to they know they're here for a purpose and they need to be in purpose and sometimes it just figuring that out and it shifts and changes as well but it's important to empaths okay number 40 my body tingles and vibrates often and this could be your entire body it could be just your legs your feet or your hands it could be you know different times like you know more than others but it vibrates and tingles and that's because you're picking up on energy 
Uh, number 41, pain comes and goes throughout my body, either joint pain or muscles. I haven't made sense of it and neither have my doctors. So that's kind of one of the things with fibromyalgia as well. Chronic pain, chronic fatigue people is that there's just, it shifts and changes. It could be joints, it could be stomach, it could be headaches, it could be muscles, it can be um all sorts of different things moving waxing waning and it's like when they look deep into it there's nothing there and it shifts and it changes it's not this ongoing same thing it can be for an extended period of time and then shift into something else because that's just kind of how the body and the energy centers of your chakras take care of you as best as it can but that means that you have energy in the system that needs to go. Okay, number 42. Sometimes, or always, I get anxiety or I have to get into a certain mental state if I know I have to be around a lot of people or particular people. So do you get, up, do you start feeling anxiety? You start stressing out. You start going, oh gosh, I got to do this. I have to do that. Or I'm going to be doing, you know, like there's a meeting at work or you have to meet with a certain person. And there's some, something like that that gives you anxiety when you have to uh, be around a lot of people or particular people. Number 43, I can't work in retail or other jobs that deal with random people from the public. You've tried <laughs> You've, you, you, you're exhausted afterwards. You take on too much. They want to talk to you all the time, stuff like this. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Number 44, being intolerant to any particular food is, and is on again, off again. So let's say you're fine with eating beans sometimes, but sometimes you're not. And sometimes you are, sometimes bananas are great. Sometimes they're not like, it could be any kind of food and it can be really random how your body reacts to it. Does that happen to you? If it does, it's because of the energy attached to the actual food, not the type of food that it is. So that's something to look into. And again, one of my videos. So I'll get more into that at another time. Okay, number 45, I get bloated often and a lot. So do you eat often do like does bloat happen after you eat and does it have do you get really bloated and um have you do you know that it's always going to be this or that that makes you bloated it's another kind of food thing but it doesn't have to be you can just get bloated without having just eaten or anything like that you could wake up bloated again energy uh number 46 i realized that working from home is the the best way for me to feel good on a regular basis. So <laughs> that's something that definitely happened with me. Um, I always worked out of the home and then I had another episode of not doing well, having to get back on disability. And then instead of a regular job, I got into working with a friend of mine from home and I realized how much better that was for me. And that was like 15 years ago. So, and I've been working from home ever since and knew that that was necessary, mandatory, especially me being off the charts, physical empath, that being around people on a daily basis was a a recipe for disaster eventually i was going to just not be able to handle it now i think in this this time period that i know things about energy I clear energy i could definitely handle that better but ideally it's not the the most ideal thing for me to be around a group of people every single day okay Number 47, migraines or headaches have been a thing in my life forever. Even when you're a child, you got headaches, tension headaches or migraines. Um, headaches have always been a thing for you. Number 48, I get emotional easily when hearing about sad or happy stories. I can even feel like I'm there or the people that are involved in the story. So does that happen to you? Do you just, you know, it could be a commercial, 20 second commercial and you're like, oh, <laughs> you're just connected. You're feeling emotional. It's not like everybody doesn't do this, but you just 
connect and get emotional and you feel like you're in this story or it's you can relate so much or you've got so much of that energy okay 49 i can't watch a lot of news tv shows and movies as they as they are too violent or energetically negative you have to be really choosy about what you watch you don't watch the news you watch certain very particular programming and small doses because again you get really overwhelmed with the energy you see a story about something that happened and there's people who suffered and there's all this and it just that can stick with you and you can think about it for hours and days and it can make you cry it's just ridiculous and it's not and that's that i've been accused of being too sensitive thing it's you're so energetically you tune in to that situation those people immediately and you feel the energy for real like it's your energy your experience your emotions so you'll tend to avoid that okay and number 50 and we're gonna be done here with our quiz i tend to know exactly what someone needs help um what i tend to know exactly what someone needs to help them so very simple it could be an animal or a person actually where you just know you just know what per what a person needs whether it's what they need in a physical sense an emotional sense you know something materialistic or whatever you'll just know what they need to help them and you're really good at that you're really good at helping people and helping them quickly helping assess what they need um whether it's advice of what's going to help them or something you're going to do for them or help them with or give them or whatever, you just know this is the thing that's going to help them. Okay, and that is our quiz, lovely. So take a moment. You can pause the video here. Take a moment and add up your yeses versus your noes. And let's see where we're at. Okay, so if you scored one to 10 yeses, you're definitely not an empath, but you probably already knew that. Why are you here? You have the normal amount of empathy, but you can always work on relating to people more and seeing things from their perspective. So I'm just kidding. I'm glad to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> like why are you here no just kidding um yeah if you scored one to ten you're definitely not an empath but again you probably already knew that um you do have a normal amount of empathy but you can always work on yeah relating to people more okay 11 to 25 you tend to be somewhat sensitive to energy and your surroundings and maybe some people more than others but you're most likely an hsp a uh, highly sensitive person but not an empath as empaths get emotionally and physically affected by energy, you, you tend to pick up on it, but it may not cause real issues in your life other than being more aware. Okay, now I'm, and then number um, 26 to 40. So if you scored yeses 26 to 40, you're definitely an empath. Congratulations. Now it's time to really understand what it means for you and how to live your life so things don't get in the way. As empaths, energy rules our lives. And for us to really be empowered, you have to understand how energy affects you. Okay, so that means you've got work to do. If this is news to you, it's time to read this book and definitely watch my series and dive into as much stuff about empaths. But I'll warn you. A lot of stuff in books, on the internet, videos will make it seem like empaths are this delicate, super sensitive being who needs to be shunned and away from humanity so they can, you know, live a somewhat normal life. The truth of the matter is, is that we're superhumans with super abilities and we just need to learn how to work our amazing bodies so we can really tap in to those gifts and abilities. Okay, and then 41 to 50, you're probably not only an empath, there's a good chance you're a physical empath to some degree and much more psychic than you realize as well. The chances that you suffer physically and emotionally because of being an empath is quite high and clearing and healing your energy should be a top priority empath. So 
There you have it, your 50 questions and hopefully a better understanding with me interjecting some information here along the way to help you understand how and why empaths are different and if you're an empath. And if you are, again, congratulations. You have superhuman abilities that most people don't. There's only about 10% of the population of us that are empaths, that are that human 2.0 the next physicality of evolution that we can look at and say is different, is changed than, um, than what it was before. Each, each year with each crop of babies that come into existence, more and more are being born empaths because the more empaths we have in the world, the more sensitive, the more united, the more understanding there will be for each other. So human 2.0, the empath will eventually be the human um, overall, you know, uh, species here you know not to say that like we could look at an empath and not and say that it's the same species but it's the the next evolution biological evolution spiritual and um uh emotionally evolved set of humans but we're like starting this off so the more we understand this about ourselves the more that we lean into it the more that we learn the more that we learn about energy learn about our physicality learn about our spiritual connections um learn about how energy works for each of us individually and universally we will be happy in our own private lives with each other our interpersonal Personal relationships with our careers with the environment with Gaia mother Gaia herself and we will move into the future in a much more healthy way because we'll be so much more in the know so with that lovely soul I want to thank you for being here I hope that this video uh, shed some light in your world about what it is to be an empath and I do hope you go and you download this uh, ebook it was written for you and please reach out if there's any questions that you have if you'd like to book energy clearing with me or psychic advice and uh again my website is the healing and uh don't forget i'm going to be coming out with all of these videos to go into more detail about these different topics for empaths aside from that i upload channeled guided astral meditations i work directly with gaia the archangels ascended masters to bring you one of a kind amazing self-healing uh light body energy clearing and grounding meditations as well as my stories and articles that i write on medium i have uh several that are on the way out very soon uh what are the different clairs clairvoyance clairaudience clairsentience um all that good stuff and i go into t detail about that and then the other article uh, other articles i'm working on are uh the 20 or 21 clues on is your third eye opening and another one is all about crystals and how important they are to us just to name a few but i have several articles um as well as a kind of a lot already on medium.com and uh aside from that i have my podcast and you can find me on instagram and again Please let me know if I can be of service. If you if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you want to come back here, share this video with your friends and family, and comment and let me know what you think. And until next time, infinite love and blessings. Bye for now.